It starts with the very beginning of Ramadan. It does not mean the last 10 nights. It doesn't refer to only the odd nights. It doesn't refer to only Monday and Thursday. It doesn't refer to a particular hour of Ramadan. The entire month of Ramadan is blessed. It starts from the very beginning of it. And I think by now we can all agree that we're at the beginning of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. So it starts with the very, very beginning of it. The Prophet wasallam says in an authentic hadith, إِذَا كَانَ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِّنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ صُفِّدَةُ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَمَرَدَةُ الْجِنَّ The Prophet وسلم, says, when the first night of Ramadan enters upon you, صُفِّدَةُ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَمَرَدَةُ الْجِنَّ The first thing that Allah does is He removes the influences. He removes the major devils, the, the, the most aggressive of the jinn away from you and puts them in chains. So you're on this path now and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restrains those shayateen from being able to influence you the way that they would be able to influence you throughout the year. What does that mean? Allah has given you power over the shayateen throughout the entire year. Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim min sultan illa man attaba'aka min al Allah says in the Quran, you have no control or authority over my servants except for those who follow you willingly. And the call of the shaytan is, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ shakirin. You will find that most of them will not be grateful people. So you have the power to put your shaytans in chains throughout the entire year, figuratively, by not obeying them and by reducing them and by sustaining yourself with the gratitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the one who recognizes the blessings of Allah upon him will not find in himself the indecency to sin knowingly and consistently, majorly or minorly. You won't find that indecency within yourself because you know the, gratitude, you know the blessings of Allah upon you and you're, gra you're grateful to him for them. But in Ramadan, Allah pulls them further back. And Allah makes you more aware of your blessings. So while Allah feeds you with shukr, with gratitude throughout the day, through just the very act of fasting, which should increase that gratitude, Allah also reduces the influence of the shayateen, so they become weaker than they already are. They were already weak, but now they're weaker. Now they're really reduced. So if you think about this, Jannah is there, it should be, count, it should be, very, uh, it should be common sense that if there is paradise and I need to get to paradise, then no influence should get in the way. But the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that essentially what keeps us away from Jannah is not a lack of good deeds. It's our inability to get out of our own way and our following another path. Allah has already placed us on that path to get back home. We just have to make sure that we don't take a detour and get away from that path. So the very first thing the Prophet ﷺ mentions here is that the shayateen are restrained. You have no excuses now. You can't blame the influences. The influences have been reduced in ways that they will not be reduced throughout the entire year. It starts with that. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ فَلَمْ يُفْتَحْ مِنْهَا بَابٌ This is beautiful. The gates of hellfire are closed and not a single one of their doors will be opened. Not just غُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ the gates of hellfire are closed and not a single one of its doors will be opened. You don't need to be tempted. And if you just think about this, by the way, the sins that we struggle with and the bad habits that we struggle with in Ramadan are leftovers from that which comes before Ramadan. You're not going to be more tempted by sin and disobedience in Ramadan than you are outside of Ramadan. What I mean by that is that your urges to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not increase inside of Ramadan. That's not going to happen. Most people don't suddenly take up a new sin in Ramadan. <laughs> right? You don't start doing something that you weren't doing before in Ramadan in terms of sin. That's very unusual and unlikely. Instead, you have a hard time kicking the previous habits. So no new door of hellfire will be opened. The doors will not be opened for you to sin. You just need to properly let go of the old ones 
and make strides and make way in Ramadan. And the greatest accomplishment in Ramadan that you can possibly have beyond the recitation of the Qur'an, beyond the amount of prayer that you do, is to kick those bad habits. And that should be the greatest metric that you have in Ramadan. The number one thing you need to ask yourself is how much distance have I put between myself and those sins that were holding me back? That is going to be the standard for success because as Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah said, taqwa is not fasting long days and praying long into the night. Taqwa is tarkul ma'asi, is abandoning the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abandoning the bad habits. Everything beyond that is excellence, is ihsan. So this is where you start and this is your standard of success. How distant can I make myself from those sins that have had power over me because the influence they have over me now and the one who tempts me with those influences are, more, are, are weaker now than they ever will be. So if there is ever a time to completely remove those shackles, it's now. It's now. Because they're weaker now than they ever will be. And should I do that, then I can properly take my next step on that journey. Now I can run. I'm not burdened. Again, think of that person that is walking on that path, uphill, thorny bushes, and then they get to a part of their journey. It's flat land, no thorny bushes. You can run as fast as you can. But if you've got a hundred pounds on your back, you're not moving. Or you're gonna move very slow. You have to remove that burden and start making your way. And that's when the Prophet said, وَفُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ يُغْلَقْ مِنْهَا دَابٌ The gates of paradise are opened, and not a single gate of paradise is closed to you. Not one gate of paradise will be closed to you. What does that mean? There's a particular gate of Jannah for those who fast, and who excel in their fasting. And it's called Babur Rayyan. It's a very special gate of paradise that, that is reserved for the fasting. And for those who excel in their fasting. Babur Rayyan. But the Prophet ﷺ is saying that when Ramadan comes around, all of those gates start calling you. The gate of prayer. The gate of charity. The gate of generosity. The gate of good behavior. The gate of Silatul Rahim of establishing good ties with you and your family members. All of these gates are open to you. What that means is that in these seasons of mercy, Al-Hafid ibn Rajab rahimahullah comments on this very beautifully. In Ramadan, the usual good deeds that you would do are rewarded unusually. <laughs> Alright, so the usual good that you were doing anyway are rewarded unusually. As the narration of Imam Zuhri rahimahullah, a tasbih, a subhanallah in Ramadan is worth a thousand times than it is outside of the month of Ramadan. So your usual good deeds are rewarded unusually, but then you have an unusual capacity to do good deeds as well. It's twofold. You're able to do good deeds that you would not be able to do throughout the entire year. Allah opens up those doors for you, opens up those influences for you. You're able to pray more in this month than you can pray throughout the entire year. You're able to read more than you can read throughout the entire year. You're able to make, uh, to make more dua, to supplicate more than you're able to make throughout the entire year. So the idea is now, just as the only, the only bad habits that I'm suffering from in Ramadan are the waning, weakening bad habits that I have to relinquish permanently as I get into this month. But then what I need to do is salvage the good that I had because it's easier to do them and more rewardable to do them and then take on new habits that it's going, that's going to propel me once I get past this smooth patch if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees me through it. So I have to ask myself if the usual good deeds that I was doing, if I'm maintaining them and putting more quality in them, and then the unusual quantity of good deeds that I'm doing now, if there is anything of it that I can plan to take with me for the journey beyond. Because that's really what Ramadan is about. The influences have been set. The stage has been set. And essentially what the Prophet ﷺ mentions next in this hadith is that Allah will give you the perfect storm of mercy. 
Ramadan is a perfect storm of mercy. Forgiveness of sins, removing the bad influences, removing the shayateen that promote those bad influences. Not the human shayateen, they're still around in full force. But at least the jinn shayateen, maradatul jinn, restraining them, restraining the influences, opening up the doors for good deeds, rewarding your usual good deeds unusually, and then exposing you to an unusual quantity of good deeds. But at the end of the day, even with that perfect storm, you have to move and you have to run. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not run for you. And that's an important concept. And the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, also authentic, وَيُزَيِّنُ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةَ كُلِّ يَوْمٍ فِي رَمَضَانٍ فَيَقُولْ تَزَيَّنِي يُوشِكُ عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ أَنْ يُلْكُ عَنْهُمُ الْمَأُونَةَ وَالْأَذَى وَيَصِيرُ إِلَيْكَ That Allah beautifies paradise every day in Ramadan and He says to it, beautify yourself for soon my anticipating righteous servants, my anticipating righteous servants will shed their hardships and griefs and enter into you. So your Jannah gets more beautiful every day in Ramadan. How are you decorating your home every single day in Ramadan? Treat every single day as a race. And expose yourselves to those births of mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to find momentum in this Ramadan that we will be able to continue after Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are accepted and forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expose us to every good, remove from us from every evil, and remove from us the influence of anyone that seeks to turn us away from Him and make us more attentive to every influence that seeks to bring us closer to Him. Allahumma ameen. Have you ever wished that there was a Muslim version of YouTube or Netflix? Well, we have created one. The One Islam TV app has no adverts and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran videos, stories of the prophets, hot topic, debates, and so much more. Four to eight new videos are uploaded daily, inshallah. You can watch or listen to videos while your device is switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you, as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work. Mm -hmm.